Hello, I am Apostle Oluwole Adekunle of the Reality of Grace Ministries International, London, United Kingdom. I just want to use this opportunity to invite you to our services on Sundays from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. Come and enjoy the fresh presence of the Holy Spirit, a service where you know you will feel the tangibility of God. You know, God is made real via the world. And on Fridays, we meet from 7 also to 10 p.m. where we pray and take what rightfully belongs to us in Christ Jesus. I will be expecting you to come and you will not regret to come for any of these services. God bless you. I'm expecting you. Peace be unto you. Shalom. Can we rise up for a minute? Can we sincerely talk to God? You know, mark the word sincerely talk to God and Father. Do not let me be the hearer alone. Hearers of the word of God alone do not prosper. You hear, you internalize what you have heard. You heard what I said. You hear and internalize what you have heard. Verbalize what you have heard. Then action what you have heard. You do get what I'm trying to say. Yes, you first hear. Then you internalize what you have heard. You know, the process of internalizing it is that how does this thing relate to me? Because if we don't internalize it, you can't know. Are we here? Yes, sir. You will not know how the word of God affects you. You first hear, then you internalize, then you verbalize. Amen and amen. amen. Then you now action it, then you begin to see results. Amen. But we are masters at hearing. We don't even internalize it. That means reflect on it. We don't even verbalize it. You, as children of God, you have to imitate your father. That is what the Bible says. That you should imitate your heavenly father. God creates by speaking. Yeah. And you have to create by speaking. Yeah. Because the Bible says as children, you should imitate your father. Ephesians chapter 5, 1 and 2. You should imitate your father. If God keeps speaking, God keeps speaking, you have to keep speaking. The time we use in gossiping is a waste of, you know, God's precious gift. Yeah. And what is that God's precious gift? The ability to speak. Kenneth Hagin Jr. says, he said, the greatest gift given to man is the ability to speak. Because that makes you act like God. He said, but at the end of the day, he said, it's the most abused gift. What you should use in building your own life, you use it in destroying other people's lives. Oh, you didn't get what I'm saying? Yeah. What you should use in building your own life, I am blessed, I am highly favored, God has exalted my horn like the horn of the unicorn, my flourish like the palm tree, I grow like the cedar in Lebanon, I see a thousand fall at my side, ten thousand by my right hand. They do not come near me. Surely there is no enchantment against me. There is no divination against me. From this day forward, it shall be seen what God has done. The enemy shall not exert upon me. The sons of wickedness shall not afflict me. No evil shall befall me. No plague shall come near my dwelling. They shall surely gather. And when the gathering is not of God, they shall fall for my sake. The Lord has exalted my horn like the horn of the eunuch. I flourish like the palm tree. I grow like the cedar in Lebanon. I am blessed in my going out, blessed in my coming in, in the name of Jesus Christ. The enemy shall not exact upon me, the sons of wickedness shall not afflict me. As my death, so shall be my strength. I shall return to my grave in a good old age. In the name of Jesus Christ. You see, things that you should say, words that should be in your spirit, you stand out of the abundance of the heart. The mouth has to speak. Words that should be in your heart, you release, you know, and give it the creative power. Let me tell you, what's in your mind are powerless. Yeah. What's in your heart are powerless. Death and life are in the power. Only the tongue gives power to what is in your heart. Whatever is in your heart has no power for performance. Whatever is in your heart has no power for performance. 
Whatever is in your heart has no power for performance. Whatever you have in your heart has no power for performance. Whatever you think in your mind has no power for performance. It is only what you release. As soon as you release it, then it has power to perform. Death and life are in the power. 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 You see, in Genesis chapter 1 verse 2, everything yeah. was upside down. Yeah. Even the Holy Ghost was present. You didn't get that. Yeah. Even the Holy, the Spirit of the Lord was over it. Nothing was done in the presence of the Holy Spirit. You didn't get that. The Holy Spirit was there. Everything was in comatose. Everything was in the lamentation. Nothing, oh God. Yeah. Nothing worked. But the Holy Spirit was there. Oh God. Yeah. If you had me, just say I hear. I hear. God bless you. Amen. If you had me, just say I hear, I hear. I hear. The Holy Ghost was around. Oh, this the Holy Ghost be here, be here. He won't change anything. But when you speak, listen to me, when you speak the mind of God in the presence of the Holy Ghost, there is creation. But when you speak the mind of the devil in the presence of the Holy Ghost, he departs. He will leave the arena. That is why the Bible says, grieve not the Holy Ghost. Don't grieve him. As soon as you begin to talk against people and destroy them, I know they. You grieve him. Grieve not the Holy Ghost. When you begin to destroy the person created by the Holy Spirit, you want him to be there to find you? No. You are destroying somebody created by God, and you think God will be there to support you? If they destroy your own children, will you be there? Oh, listen to me. If they are destroying your own children, and calling your own children by name, how the marriage scatter, the marriage of your child scatter, how you know this one did that, we do be there. So the Holy Spirit lives. Amen. 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 When I say lives, he withdraws. He withdraws from yeah. performance. Because he said he will never leave you nor forsake you, but he withdraws. Now, the Holy Spirit will never leave us nor forsake us. Have you seen Christians dying in plane crash? Yet the Holy Ghost was there. Have we ever thought about it? Have you seen Christians being killed by armed robbers? Yet the Holy Spirit. What happened? What happened? Have we asked you a question? What happened? Are we here? Yes, sir. I want to now, you know, to speak. Life. Amen. Just release life unto yourself. Life that you know will be we're glad in the heart of God. Amen. The Bible says, I don't know which area of your life is in darkness today. I don't know. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form. That was should became. Yeah. That was men became. That in the beginning, the deed there is not there. In beginning. Because God began the beginning. Yeah. Oh God. Yeah. When you say in, begin, in the beginning, that means God began. God didn't begin. God began the beginning. So in beginning, God created. Because he was before them. Not in the beginning. In beginning, God created. So he preceded the beginning. Oh God Almighty. Are we here? Then the earth became. There was no way God would create a deformed thing. It should be the earth became. That was, mean became. Without form. 
and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep and the spirit of, the, of God moved on the face of the waters. The spirit of God was there. But nothing was done. I don't care how much of the Holy Ghost you carry. If you are not speaking, your life remains yeah. redundant. Yeah. If you are not speaking, your life, I don't care the Holy Ghost you carry. Oh, you didn't get that. Jesus was full of the Holy Ghost without measure. Are we here? He got to the tomb of Lazarus. He didn't say. He called Lazarus. Then Lazarus answered. If we don't call, nothing will answer you. He got to a tree in Mark 11 that disappointed him. The tree of disappointment. And every tree of disappointment in your life and in my life, we curse it. Every tree of disappointment. Every tree you look up to, to go and say, oh, something will give me and you meant nothing. The tree that keeps giving you nothing. I demand today that it dries up forever. Jesus is so kind. Was so kind. You know what he said? Nobody eats of you again. Oh. Nobody will taste of your disappointment again. I have tasted it. I don't want some of you, it is what others have suffered, you want them to suffer too. The shame, you said, no. They have to suffer more than me so that they go day wise. No, the wisdom should be what you telling them what you have suffered. Not to pass through the same shame. It is wickedness. You, 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 you know why you are limping? Why you are limping? Well, because you didn't know there was a hole there. Yakulu bala. Etu kabrina molaha. You love the person. Ha, tell him, I say, ah, me, I want the person to limp too. That is wickedness. You limp so that others will not limp. <laughs> he didn't get that. You limp so that others will not limp. Look and learn a lesson from Jesus. Nobody will taste of your disappointment again. He said, you disappointed me. It will not be repeated in any mass life again. Oh, that is goodness. That is how life should be. That is goodness. That is being kind. That is being kind. Nobody will taste of you. I've tasted the disappointment. But no more for anybody. Amen. Have we ever stood what to survive the shame of your family saying that with this shame I stand on behalf of my family? And I decree today, said, No, everybody will pass through it. Mm, everybody will pass through it. That's not a glorious life. Jesus paid the price for us so that we can enjoy. Pay the price for others so that they can enjoy. That is how life should be. Oh God. Amen. Joseph suffered for his brethren. And his brethren came to enjoy. Even though they were the ones that made him to suffer. Yeah. Oh, are we here? Yes, sir. All this, what they did to me, what they did to me. Amen. Amen. What about what they did to Jesus? I want you to open your mouth and release the Holy Ghost was there. Nothing was done. Yeah. It takes revelation. Yeah. May God open your eyes to what I'm saying. Amen. The Holy Spirit was there. Nothing was done. Yeah. Until God released power. Yeah. Death and life are in the power. Whatever is in your mind. Okay, can you just imagine? You put grains inside dry granary. You know, granary, we have great until I went to the north. I saw granaries everywhere. Are we here? Can it grow? No. It won't grow unless you plant. The process of speaking is the process of planting. Yeah, yeah. No speaking, no planting. 
You plant words in the lives of your children. You call them forth and say, you shall be the head and not the tail. You don't think it. Thinking is not enough. That is seed in the granary. That is seed in the granary. But seed on the ground, you, 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 you speak it out. Are we here? Are we ready to speak? I want you to open your mouth into your life. Tell yourself that you will not reduce. Because let me tell you, reduction comes. Why are you here on Friday? If you are here on Friday, let me see your hand. Please, you guys are missing. Take it from me. Get the tip. And see, they gave Israel. The land of Israel started from Iraq, from the Euphrates. Where are they today? Gaza Strip. Do you know the cross river Jordan? Who will have owned Jordan? Down to Jordan, Euphrates, down, and Lebanon. We read it in the Bible. Can they claim Lebanon today? They kept reducing. They kept reducing. Instead of you fighting to increase, you are, com you are complying with your reduction. Wherever you go again, if you don't fight, you will still reduce yeah. there. That's life. I learned this lesson over 20 years ago. And my brother has, I told my brother, every time there's an issue and you begin to reduce, to get back to where you were before. Mm. Stand your ground and fight. Because you are eating two pieces of meat or three, you reduce it to one. Thinking you are being wise. <laughs> that one, you will lose it. Oh God. It will reduce it to half. The devil keeps, he, will, he wants to choke you and suffocate you. There are some things you call wisdom. That it is not wisdom, it is warfare lacking. Yeah. You didn't get that. It is warfare that is lacking. Warfare that is lacking. They drove, Israel could not possess Iraq, Iran, Jordan, even where they are now. <laughs> they want to take it. They are talking about two states. And Iran is not even talking about two states. Iran is saying extermination. We don't want Israel on the face of the map. Go and read Joshua chapter 1. Chapter 1 alone. See where God apportioned to them. Check your map. All those regions. They cut and cut and cut and cut and cut and cut and cut until they will take everything from you. And we are the Israel of God today. Oh, we say we are 1,000. Reality of grace is 1,000. You think I'm joking? When God said I will give account of every idle word I speak, you think I'm joking? You are joking, I'm not joking. Because if we don't increase and speak increase out and speak increase out and keep speaking increase night and day, night, and that's my wife. In the middle of the night, I speak it. I wake up, I speak it. I eat, I speak it. I bear, I speak it. And we shall see. Yes. Do, are, are you getting my point? Upon the increase of thy lips shall your belly be satisfied. Open to Proverbs 18, verse 20. Proverbs 18, 20. Quickly. And let somebody help me upon the increase. If your lips are not speaking increase, wherever you go, you decrease. If your lips are not speaking increase, wherever you go, you decrease. Wherever you go, you decrease. If you are not speaking increase, wherever you go, you decrease. Your tongue is the decider, not your destination. Could you kindly help me read? A man's belly shall be satisfied. Belly that belly means your heart. Mm. Not just your physical belly. Oh God. Mm. Let me give you an example. 
Sister Titi, it's like seeing your situation and saying, I am satisfied. That is the belly they are talking about. You didn't get that. He that believeth, out of his belly flows rivers, not fufu. It's not the belly for fufu they are talking about. They are talking about your innermost being, your person. That belly means your spirit or your in person. Uh -huh. You shall be satisfied. In other words, you shall be fulfilled. In other words, you will look and there will be no lack. Could you kindly help me read Proverbs 18 20? A man's belly shall be satisfied with the fruit of his mouth, mm -hmm. and, the, and with the increase of his lips shall he be filled. Uh -huh. Until yeah. your tongue speaks increase. Now, listen, there are two increases. Are, are you getting my point? The first is that you speak increase, you don't speak lack. Hmm? That's the first increase. That I am blessed, I am highly favored, my needs are met to overflowing. I have more than enough of every good thing. Oh, are we here? Yes, sir. You are speaking increase. Not, I am confused. London is hard. I don't know what they are saying. Oh, you understand? Okay. Uh, is that person speaking increase? No. Uh -huh. There is one increase. The second increase is the number of times you repeat increase. You do get what I'm trying to say? The force is what you are saying. The kind of words you are saying. The kind of cars you are declaring upon yourself. Your staff, the kind of cars, the kind of jobs, the kind of businesses. Oh, are we here? The kind of clientele. Your, oh. Yes, Amen. Yeah. The kind of you, you, your stand, grace you fly. Amen. Class you fly, I mean. That's what, that's one increase. I fly first class. That's an increase. But how many times do you repeat it? Until you increase in that confession of increase, you will never see satisfaction. Your belly shall not be satisfied. Which, not your physical belly. Or oh, are we here? Your person. Your person. How many types of increase? Tell me. Can you help me, please? The kind of words, how magnanimous, how hyperbolic, hyperbolic. You know, speak hyperbolically. Do you understand? I am very rich, not I am rich. Genesis 13 2 tells us that Abraham was very rich, not rich. Check it. And Abraham was, Genesis 13 2, and Abraham was very rich. In silver, in gold, and in cut. Very. Oh, did you see that? Please open, open. There's no projection here. Let's do it together. Or projector, I mean. Could you hand it? Please, we have to hurry up. Genesis 13 to quickly. From poverty. It was poverty that drove him down in Genesis chapter 12. The Bible said, and there was lack. He went down to Egypt. And came up from Egypt. Oh God. He went down to Egypt and came up from Egypt. Very rich. From very poor to very rich. Not to rich. To very rich. Are we here? Yes, sir. Do you speak to your account? Do you open your account and speak to it? That this account in the name of Jesus. You will not dry up. God is your source. You speak to your account. Jehovah God is your source of your, the fountain of inestimable, inexhaustible supply. What did I call God? The fountain of inexhaustible supply. You are my fountain of inexhaustible. There is nothing. Take everything out of God. There will still be something. Oh God. Can I say something? Take everything out of what? God. There will still be something left. It's a fountain of inexhaustible supply. It can't finish. You take everything, you see everything. Oh, you get it. <laughs> That's the God we serve. You take everything, you meet everything. It never runs dry. Ayakapaya. You take everything, you see everything. Oh. You take everything from God, you see everything left in God. Amen. His account cannot be depleted. 
If your car can never run dry, and your life will never run dry. Amen. Oh, please receive this. Amen. Receive this, receive this, receive it. Amen. Take everything from God. You still need everything left. Take everything from God, and everything will be left in God. It's a fountain of inexhaustible supply. Aye, Kelly, Aye, Kaliko Vokotai, Ikea Labarate Liba, Okulu Brate Kalaboria. I speak today. Every financial siege over this church, I blast you into pieces. I attack every lack with God's supply. You didn't hear me. I attack every lack, every lack, and every want. In any life here, I attack you with God's supply. I attack you with God's supply. In the name of Jesus. Genesis 13, verse 2, quickly, please. And Abraham was very rich in cattle. And Abraham was very, not rich. Speak hyperbolically. Speak in hyperbos. I'm very rich. I'm very great. I'm highly lifted. I'm wonderfully favored. Superlatively blessed. Oh, halaku sabaha. Did you see, did you hear what I'm saying? Speak in hyperbos. I am very rich. Wonderfully blessed. Superlatively strong. Graciously graced. Oh, you didn't get what I'm saying? That's how you should speak. Not it's not an easy road. We are traveling to heaven. Many are the dangers on the way. Then dangers will over. You saw, the, you saw how they brutalized the, that guy now. Abraham was very rich. Romans 12 21. Quickly. I want to Romans 12 21. Because I want to release some things in the air before I preach the message today. Don't just come to church and not get energized. Amen. Amen. We are not a cold church and we will never remain a cold church. Amen. We are a firebrand church Amen. and we will remain a firebrand church. Amen. I don't like that. Amen. 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 Are we here? Yes, Pro, uh, Romans 12, 21. Can you kindly help me read? Be not overcome of evil. Don't let poverty overcome you. But overcome evil with good. Overcome poverty with wealth. You didn't get what I'm saying? That evil, what is the evil? You have to fill in the gap. Sickness is evil. Shout it. Shout it. To, shout it. Shout it. Let the devil be mad. Shout it. Sickness, you are evil. Let's go. Sickness, you are evil. Oh, shout it again. Sickness, you are evil. Sickness, you are evil. I hate you. I curse you. I reject you. You shall not prosper. In this church, you shall not prosper. In any part of my life, of my body, shall I? Now let me tell you why is sickness and poverty evil? He sent his word, he healed them, and delivered them from their destruction. Sickness is evil because it's destructive. Yes. How God anointed Jesus with the Holy Ghost and with power that he went about doing good and healing as many as are oppressed of the devil. God, God was with him. Sickness is an oppressor. Yeah. Oh God. Who touched me? Who touched me? A woman said I was the one. He said, oh, woman, thou art healed from thy plague. Sickness is a plague. You know what a plague is? Coronavirus. That's a plague. Your son, sickness is a plague. Amen. Amen. Oh, are we here? Yes, sir. Lazarus was sick and he died. 
Sickness kills. It's a killer. So we want to know whether it's, the sickness is evil. He said, don't be overcome of evil. And it, are all these things blessed? The Bible says concerning the woman with the issue of blood, for she has spent all her army. Sickness is a devourer. It's a devourer. So you want to know if it is evil. Amen. Amen. In Jeremiah chapter 8, 21 and 22, you know what the Bible says? For the heart of the daughter of my people are my heart. Sickness hurts. It pay- yeah! Yeah! Sickness. It hurts. Is there no balm in Gilead? Is there no physician there? Why then is the heart of the daughter of my people not restored? Sickness hurts. If you know you want to be evil, go to the hospital. They don't smile in hospitals. When you go there, you are sober. You behave yourself. They don't smile in hospitals. It's a place of pain. It's a place of grief. Are we here? Are you ready now? Romans 12, 21. Don't be overcome of evil. Don't let any sickness overcome you. Overcome sickness with the word by his stripes, I, I have been whole. Are we here? He said, overcome sickness with good, and God's word is good. Amen. If you want to know whether God's word is good, 1 Kings chapter 8, verse 56. 1 Kings 8, 56. Let's see if God's word is good. Read it. Because I just told you now. Amen. Because God's words are God's promises to us. A God's instruction. First Kings chapter 8, verse 56, B precisely. But read 56 quickly. Blessed be the, be, be, be the Lord. Blessed be the Lord. That has given rest unto his people Israel. That, that has given rest unto his people Israel. According to all that he promised. According to all that he promised. There had not failed, failed one word of all his good promises. Did you see that? Good. Mm. Good promises. He said, overcome evil with good promises. Good. The word of God is good. Are we ready? Don't let evil overcome you. Don't let poverty overcome you. Overcome evil with good. Are you, are you ready to overcome? Yes, sir. And the Bible says, he that overcome it, I will give the crown of life. Amen. So, as soon as you release words of over, you know, words that overcome, they are going to put a crown of Amen. prosperity, Amen. a crown of favor, Amen. a crown of joy, Amen. a crown of liberty. Amen. He that overcome it, I will give a crown of life. Amen. I will give you a crown. Amen. Are you ready to overcome today? Yeah. Are you ready to go with shining, 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 yeah. shining? Yeah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, Open your mouth right now. Glory <laughs> Baha. Open your mouth right now. In the name of Jesus, just open your mouth. Open your mouth. Just open your mouth by the authority and the power of the Holy Ghost. Open your mouth. Open your mouth and begin to reverse every evil. Overcome. 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 I overcome shame with the glory of God. With the spice of Jesus, by the spice of Jesus, I have been made whole. By the spice of Jesus, by the spice of Jesus, I have been made whole. In the name of Jesus Christ, I defeat barrenness because the word says, "No shall be barren." I have been delivered from every spirit of grief, every spirit of sorrow, every spirit of shame, every spirit of reproach. I can't every man who is intended for me and my household. You shall not stand. You shall not stand. You shall not stand. You shall not stand. Open your mouth. Open up. Open your mouth, pray, 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 pray. 
He shall not be. He shall not be. He shall not be. He shall not be. In the name of Jesus. He shall not stand. He shall not stand. He shall not stand. The castle of hell shall not stand. We defeat the devil. We defeat his plans. We defeat his expectations. In the mighty name of Jesus. If you believe that heaven shouted it, sounded amen like warriors. Let's go. Can you say it? My tongue is consistent with divine help. My tongue, my words are consistent with prosperity. In the name of Jesus. I will not speak the fears of men. In the mighty name of Jesus. Shout Amen. Shout Amen. Now you can really have your seat. It's not enough to have the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. It's not enough to say, I have the Holy Spirit. It's not enough. It is what you keep speaking that makes all the difference. Amen. 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 Praise God Almighty. Can I say something? In this day and age, hmm, prophetically, a lot of people will suffer heart failure. Yeah. Let me come again as we quietly sit because it helps the anointing upon me. All right? Yes, prophetically, many shall suffer heart failures. The Bible says the heart of many, not few, shall fail them because of the things they will begin to see. A lot shall suffer heart failure. A guy of 20-something now, yeah, he died of heart failure. Thinking about what? It's scriptural. The only answer is to rise up. And take the shield of faith. Where which you shall quench every fairy dart of hell. Without faith you can't quench the arrows of hell. No. We just took our shield of faith now. That is, that faith is not a thinker. No. Faith does not. You don't think it's mental balance. No. Faith is a speaker. Oh, you didn't get that. Yeah. Faith is not a thinker. Faith is a speaker. Second Corinthians 4 13. Yeah. Check it and help me read. Faith is a speaker. You understand? Faith will declare what it believes without any fear. Yeah. Don't be distracted. Let your mind be here. Enjoy every second of your stay here. Because this is a fuel station. Yeah. You come, you start, you wash your car, and they tank your car. You wash the Yamayama. Yeah. Because the Bible says we are washed by the cleansing, you know, by, of, by the word. We are washed by the word. The word of God washes. So we come here, you are washed. All the negatives, you stand that everything that was not yours that you took in the week, they will shake them off here. Amen. Wash them away. Amen. And they will now fuel you with fresh oil. Amen. You will just go. Now you that were down before, you start bouncing. Nobody can Amen. kill me. Hey, hey, hey. Nobody. They don't burn you where to keep. But you woke up today looking for python under your bed. That's how you woke up. You stay here. Stay here. Just hold it, look. Sorry. You are even afraid to lift. But now it says, come. 
let chimpanzee come, let anything come, I will face you. Why? Because you've been turbocharged. Yeah, slow. Work with a failure is just a time. Over time, the spirit of failure will catch up with you. Work with a successful person over time. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Praise God. Hallelujah. We spoke about the girls' generation. And we want to quickly round up today. But if we see uh, God leading us in the way God has led us here, you know, there comes a time God wants to force some blessings upon you yeah. when you are not ready to receive it. An angel appeared to a pastor in the U.S. The pastor just saw that a man came into his office, true life story. He wrote it in his book. Pam, 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 pam. He saw a handsome looking man. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. The man just stood and looked at the pastor on his seat. He said, command me to go and get the money you need for your church building. Because heaven was tired. They were not speaking. Heaven was tired. So the man, and that is why you have to read wide. If the man was ignorant, he wouldn't know what to do. Yeah. The man looked at the man. He just saw him. I said, command me to go and get the money for your church building. Now, he looked at the man and he said, in the name of Jesus, I, did, I command you, go and get the money for my... The man just disappeared from his office. He just disappeared. In two weeks, they got $300,000 miraculously. Hey, Lord. You may, let me tell you, hmm? as of the year it happened, one, and secondly, America. They showed me a property in America. Hmm? If, they tell you, if I tell you how much they bought it, yeah? It had car park, first floor, second floor, third floor, then five garages. I will not tell you how much they bought it. It is here we eat money. I don't know whether you... Yes. <laughs> because if it's America, all the things we've been donating now will have started to raise our shoulders. Yeah. They will listen to us. But we are in Britain. Amen and amen. amen. 300,000 met it. How many of you know Cindy Jacobs? The general. Yeah. She went to a city one day and they landed late at night. And they have told her she's American that this city is dangerous. You cannot go. As soon as she landed, because if there was flight delay, a man walked up to her. Yeah. Oh, hello, how are you? You welcome to this country. You welcome this, this very handsome man. The man took her all around, make sure she got to her hotel. Ha. And this woman just said, ha. he said, oh, I hope you are safe now. Bye bye. He said, what's your name? He said, I'm Louis. And disappeared. Yeah. It was an angel. Yeah. Said, so my name is Louis. Okay, Louis, how do I? Ah, let's exchange contact. America. I think it was in um, Colombia. He spoke English, spoke a language. Oh God. Yes. And just disappeared. Are we here? Yes. So every time God wants to help us like this, he pushes us to pray. Yes. Because heaven will not do anything for the earth unless the earth demands it. You have not because you ask not. Heaven will not do anything for you unless you demand it. It is written, James 4.2, uh, Brother Kenny quoted it today. You have not because you ask not. If you want to have, you ask. If you don't want to have, you keep quiet. Simple. If you want to have a big car, you ask for a big car. 
you want to have a small car, you ask because it is to you according to your faith. Now, let me tell you, it is not to you according to your rank in church. They don't give it to you because you are a pastor. Mm -mm. It's not to you according to your ordination. Mm -mm. Oh, God. All the soldiers that were at the war front, were they able to kill Goliath? So it is not, it's not to you according to your training. It is not to you according to your training. It is not to you according to your family background. It is not to you according to your age. It is not to you according to your ordination. It is according to you according to your faith in God. Yes. Everybody saw your stand that Goliath was too strong. David saw Goliath too weak. Yeah. It is to you according to your faith. He saw him so weak that this stone will kill you. Stone will kill a giant. Goliath was so angry that how can you be bringing a stone to me? You should bring a machine gun. Can you see my size? Am I a dog? <laughs> he said, you are. Those without covenant are called dogs. Yes. Goliath called himself by the right name. He said, am I a dog? He said, yes, you are a dog. I bet I'm a god. One is a god. One is a dog. God. Psalm 82. He said, ye are gods. Not dogs. Yeah. Ye are gods. Without our dogs. Revelation 22. Without our dogs. Amen. Yes. Those that will be without, that will not make it to the city. Dogs. Hallelujah. Glory are you still happy? Yes. Are you still happy? Yes. Amen. May the Lord help us. May the Lord help us in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. So, check without our dogs in Revelation 21 or 22, you'll find it there. Huh? 22, 15, that means I was right. Without our dogs. If you are not in Christ, you are a dog. If anybody be in, if anybody be without Christ, you are a dog. Goliath said, am I a dog? He called himself by the right name. Yeah. You take care of dogs by stoning them. Amen. Amen. Okay. Quickly, because we've done... Sister Grace, you are laughing. Um, we've done the first part, the Gaius generation, yeah. and I want to release that spirit yeah. upon the whole essence of Treating this topic is because we want to release the spirit of Gaius. Amen. 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 Into everyone. And I want to be the greatest carrier of that spirit. Amen. I don't want anybody to carry a heavier spirit. Because I told you that when we get to heaven, Gaius will be my very good friend. I will tell, I will tell Gaius in heaven that you see. I don't know why a lot of people were not inspired to talk about you. I spoke about you. Say said, yes. Yes, sometimes I attend your services. Yes. It, they do. You think I'm just joking. When you are talking about those who give back in old age or whatever, say that sits down in services like that. The Bible says we are in the company of what? And the spirit of just men made perfect. The spirit of just men, they justifies one in heaven. They visit the services. They visit the services. They just sit down. You're talking about Gaius. We don't even know. It may be a special guest today. Just smiling. You know, in heaven, we don't frown. Just smiling today. They come. They come. The spirit of just men made perfect. They visit us. It's scriptural. It's not only angels that come. Yeah. Sometimes you stand, say, you know, they be laying hands. The God, you know, true. You stand. The same God that visited me, as you are speaking, they will be putting their hand yeah. upon you. 
Amen. Amen. But when we get to some dimensions, there are people in the dimensions. I don't want to call their names. Pastor Stanley knows because I don't want you to worship anybody. Okay, my wife knows. I don't want woman worship. They see when Abraham comes. They see them. You are looking at me like, uh, didn't, okay, did they, the did heavenly beings around, didn't they see Jesus? Yeah. Moses and Elijah around. Yeah. Yeah. All this uh, masquerade you call around, they are around. <laughs> because uh, the Yorubas call the masquerade around, they are not from heaven. Around. <laughs> Are we here? Yes. So, quickly. Gaius was from the Macedonian city of Derby. Apart from Apostle Paul benefiting from planting the Philippian church, he was also blessed with two faithful brethren, Gaius and Aristarchus. And we see that in Acts of the Apostles, chapter 19, verse 29, because this is just to cap what we started. And in Acts 19, 29, we say that, you see, Gaius was picked up in Acts 16 because it was in Acts 16 that they said, come to Macedonia and help us. They saw in a vision, a man of Macedonia saying, come and help us. Probably it was Gaius. Probably it was Gaius. Amen. Amen. It, I don't think it was the Philippian jailer. Because if you were the one that was calling for the help of God, they won't jail the people of God. Are we here? Yes. Probably it was Gaius. Because when Paul got to the city of Macedonia and preached there, he won two disciples. I believe about six of them followed them in, in, in his missionary journey. I don't know. But Gaius and Aristarchus were from the city of Macedonia. Dab precisely for Gaius. And they followed him and became part of his entourage. Yeah. They went to the city of Ephesus. Eh? Gaius of Ephesus. Are we here? There was a riot there. Amen. Amen. There was a riot because Paul preached. And let me tell you, the enemies of the gospel hmm, are those that the gospel will affect directly. There was a time Nigerian Buris they were not happy with the emergence of the Pentecostal movement because they said their, their sales dropped. You should know that I was in the manufacturing industry and they were, we were part of Fop Top, food, drinks, and tobacco. Amen. Food, drinks, and tobacco, the association was called Fop Top. Do you understand? Food tobacco and beverages. So we are under. Nigeria Buris was part of it. They didn't like the emergence of the Pentecostal church because the Muslims already preach against alcohol. Amen. Amen. A true Muslim will not even touch it. Mm -hmm. A social Muslim, golf. <laughs> now, I was shocked when they said Nigerian drank about nine, is it nine billion? You stand, because there is something trending now on social media. They said, okay, you are laughing. They drank about nine billion dollars worth of drink. And they said, with all the churches and mosques in Nigeria, who are those that drank them? <laughs> Were they spirits? <laughs> Up till now, nobody has answered the question. <laughs> are we here? They said churches everywhere, preaching against alcohol, mosques everywhere, Allah, work, work, Allah, work, work, everywhere. And they drank, they, they broke record. 2019, they broke record, they broke record, nine billion. One, they said there is no money, but there was money, nine billion for alcohol. That's one. Number two, Churches everywhere in every who are those drinking the alcohol? Do they use it for holy communion? <laughs> so 
with do you understand? Amen. Amen. Why am I saying this? I'm saying this because every time you preach the gospel, those whose businesses are affected will begin to attack the gospel. Yeah. So when Paul preached, it was in Ephesus Acts 19 that they gathered their magical books. Acts 19, 20 said, so mightily grew the world, it prevailed. To the extent that magicians brought their books. Books they used their lifetime to gather and set them on fire. So one book swallowed up the other. You see, one snake swallowing up the other is still, you stand every time you gather, you listen to a message, and gather your pornographic materials and destroy them, one snake has swallowed up the other. Yeah. Oh, you didn't get what I'm saying. Yes, amen and amen. amen. But if one snake has not swallowed up the other, God has not prevailed in your life. Because God first changes a man before he changes his circumstance. Let me come again. God is interested first in changing you before changing your circumstances. You know why? Proverbs 1.32 The prosperity of a fool will destroy him. So God can prosper you in foolishness. Proverbs 1.32 The prosperity of a foolish man will destroy him. So God cannot. The wiser you are are you here? The wiser you are, the more prosperous. Yeah. As soon as God met, my brother, God met Solomon. He said, what will you want? Solomon said, give me wisdom. He said, yeah, you got me. She. Because why? And it was Solomon who wrote the book of Proverbs. Yeah. So he got it. He said, the prosperity of a fool will destroy him. I see why God gave me plenty, 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 plenty money. Because it's not the riches. No. Nobody has equal the wealth of Solomon except Jesus. Jesus Christ said, a greater than Solomon is here. Amen. He was the only one who said a greater than Solomon was here. Nobody is greater than because it was God that came. The one who prospered Solomon was the one that came in human. So it should be greater. Are we here? As soon as Solomon chose wisdom. Ah! God said, you choose wisdom? Why? You didn't even ask for the lives of your enemies. So they died by fire. Some assault. Several times before you die. They won't gain God's prosperity. He said, you didn't even ask for the lives of your enemies. He said, you did not ask for the lives of your enemies. Pastor, you cause now. Yeah, I cause sickness. Yeah. I cause demons. Are we here? Yes, sir. Settle down and cause sicknesses and diseases. Those are your enemies. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against spirits. So it is the spirit you are wrestling against you should start cursing. Amen. Not the remote control. No. That has nothing to do with it. Oh, are we here? Yes, Tell yourself, raise your right hand. Say sleep. sleep. Why are you doing this to me? Why are you doing this to me? <laughs> so we will continue. Do you understand? Yes, so if you are in that category, you've, you've asked yourself questions. <laughs> so can I continue? Yes, sir. Now that you are awake. So if I still look to the right and left, I've, then I may come and tell you, particularly not the whole church now. I will now come to the individual. And I will say, say after me. Sleep, why are you doing this to me? It happened to Bishop Boedip. He was preaching. Hmm? I think he was preaching and somebody slept. He told the usher, 
making more. And the usher went and said, you were sleeping. He said, I was not sleeping. <laughs> he said, you were sleeping. Bishop told you. He said, I wasn't sleeping. And Bishop said, it's right. He said, next time you go and you tell them, he said, you were sleeping. <laughs> he said, because somebody is talking to you and you say, you're sleeping. He's not sleeping. He has woken up. <laughs> he said, you tell him. He said, he wasn't lying. You were sleeping. No, you were sleeping. That's why I came. He said, because you woke him up, you said you are sleeping. He said, I'm not sleeping. I'm, you want to talk to you? Are we here? Amen. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Every time, hmm, every time you begin to preach and begin to preach against anything, they will come against you. Mm-hmm. Corruption will react. They will start digging, are you perfect? Why are you doing this? How can you be talking about this? Bottom line, I told you, you know, I digress and said, ask for wisdom. Mm-hmm. If your money is not enough, mm-hmm. it's the same God yesterday. It's the same God today. It's Amen. the same God forever. Amen. Ask for wisdom. Don't say, God, give me wisdom. Give me wisdom. Give me wisdom. Mm-hmm. Oh, God, give me wisdom. He, in the name of Jesus, give me wisdom. Pastor said, would you give me wisdom? Uh, hmm? <laughs> Let me tell you. You want, instead of who praying it, attend your house fellowship. Nice. That is wisdom center. Did you get that? Yeah. Uh-huh. Don't pray for it. You go and get it. He said, get wisdom. Get understanding. Not pray wisdom. Get wisdom. Get understanding. Every time, imagine saying, Father God, give me wisdom. But you never attend house fellowship. That's where God wants to give you the wisdom. Whatever you have gleaned here today hmm, as wisdom, what if you didn't come? But you are praying at home. Oh, I agree. It will not be given. Do you understand? Oh, are we here? Yes, Every time you carry your Bible to read and say, Father, give me wisdom, he's ready to answer it. So when you open it, we show you the path of wisdom. Don't pray for it in isolation. Every time you are going for your house fellowship and you say, Father, give me wisdom. God is going to inspire somebody, your teachers, your pastors there. In all the house fellowship centers, we have about 17 here. God is going to inspire somebody, no matter irrespective of the age or the gender. He, will just, he or she will just pick somebody, something. Aye! He will pick it up. Are we here? Yes. Wisdom and prosperity go together. Yes. Can we say it loudly? Wisdom, Wisdom. And, prosperity. and prosperity. They are best of friends. They are best of friends. If you see foolishness, say it now. If you see foolishness, you are saying poverty. You are saying poverty. Uh-huh. In Proverbs, right? I'm just digressing. Right, Proverbs chapter 8. In Proverbs chapter 8, from beginning to the end, yeah. hmm? Proverbs chapter 8, listen very well to me. Listen very well. Listen very well. Then I will, I'm still within time. Don't worry. Proverbs, all of Proverbs chapter 8 is talking about wisdom. And you know who they refer to as the wisdom of God? Jesus yeah. is the wisdom of God. All of Proverbs chapter 8, hmm? Because some people are asking that God should give them money. Amen. Amen. If you are in that category, you've been praying for money, raise your hand. I'm not joking. If you have asked God that, Father, give me, yeah? That is God's answer to you. Amen. Get my wisdom. Amen. And you will get more money. Amen. Are we here? Amen. Amen. You are not paid 
for the problem you create. You are paid for the problem you solve. So that's the answer to money making. You are not paid for the problem you create. You are paid for the problems you solve. Doctors solve the problem of sicknesses. Drivers solve the problem of moving from one state to the other. Teachers solve the problems of ignorance. Are we here? Yes. Pastors solve the problem of spiritual issues. Pilots solve the problem of flying to bridge time. You are paid for the problem. You stop looking for money. Start looking for what problem to solve. And not just solve it, solve it well. And let me tell you, don't solve a problem hmm, in an area that is a problem to you. Can you just imagine, I say I want to fly people because I'm a post. <laughs> Who will enter my plane? <laughs> then I enter into the pilot's club that I have Mumbo. Mumbo. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Apostle Olu is the captain of today. This is the first time. I didn't go for any training. <laughs> Please just give me five minutes. Just give me five minutes. I just want to check. I'm still, I want to get used to the, the instrument. Will you wait? No. You see, if you die, they will call it suicide. You killed yourself. Now, you see, some of the things I've said now, some will not listen that God is answering some financial issues. Don't go to an area that is a problem to you. Mm -hmm. Me, my, my wife is a fashion designer. She went for the training. Hmm? She went for the training, and some of the clothes she sold it herself, that you see. I don't go near her. I hate the sight of machine, but I tolerate it because it's in my you do get what I'm trying to say? I don't go near her. Because how will you sit down and begin to court, you join this? I don't have that patience. Yes. Do you understand? I don't have that patience. Left for me, as soon as she puts, you are designing it today, ask her. As I will tell her in two hours you should be able to finish that. Things are not done like that. So how many years? <laughs> So as soon as she's trying to explain, I, I go up. I leave her. So when I see Adeba or Jones and all those crazy whatever, I cannot be. And I don't want to be. Oh, you didn't get what I'm saying. I don't want to be a fashion designer, but you can design for me. Is that okay? <laughs> because I can't stand it. That's not my area of gifting. Yeah. Well, they now tell us, whatever your hand finds to do, do it. I said, Sister Titi. Please, if you have clothes to sew, give it to me. I need work. You will not just get work. You will get court cases. Yeah. Yeah? By the time I'm so so so, so uh, your dress becomes like bacon. You know what they call like bacon? Uh -huh. yeah? Mommy, we explain that. Yeah? I'm supposed to sew dress and I'll do a bacon for you. That's not my area. Oh, are we here? Yes. This guy was issue. May God help me. Yes. But if, because they said I should flow in the word of knowledge and in the word of wisdom, and I perceive in my spirit that I'm answering questions. That's what I'm hearing. That's what I'm giving. It's not what I'm preaching, but a man of God should be flexible. You die with your message. No. You are not here to impress people. No. You are here to impact people. Yes. A man of God should not be there to impress people. Yes. You understand? You should be there to impact people. Yes. It is not about, about your homiletics. No. Oh, how accurate you are, how much you are disciplined enough. Well, Jesus disciplined. He knowing the thought of their heart said, yeah. the thought of their heart controlled him. Yeah. Not what he planned. Yeah. Oh no. God. It was not what he planned. Yeah. It was the thought of their heart. And you know how our thoughts vacillate. Yeah. Oh God. Do you know how many thoughts? They said we think how many, is it 10,000 thoughts per minute? Fly through our minds. Zipparawa or whatever. 10,000. 
some of you have gone to Jamaica and come back <laughs> in this service. You understand? You went to Jamaica, you took off to Colombia, from Colombia, you landed in Argentina, you went to Nigeria and traveled to Ogoru, you greeted your mother, and you are back to the yeah. You are back to the service now. Who we arrest you? Did you get that? Choose an area that is very easy for you. That is difficult for others. Do it very well. Keep perfecting in your area of expertise. There is no end to perfection. The largest room is the room for improvement. That's the largest room in the whole universe. The biggest room is the room for improvement. Keep perfecting and perfecting and perfecting. and per Don't say I've read it before. Keep perfect. Keep thinking. Amen. Amen. Do we go? So they arrested Gaius and Aristarchus in the crusade because why? The magical books that were burnt, your stand, were expensive. And they now say, okay, from burning of books, they will burn the statue of Di uh, Diana. Diana. And all these artifacts that we, yeah. some of these things that we, that we sell, you, go, you know, because they were goldsmiths or blacksmiths, whatever you call it. We won't have market again. No. So what do we do? Say so let's create, let's create an opera. And they all said, an opera in the city. You know, when I read about the city, I remember Lagos. Because when you read the Bible, they said that those who are protesting they didn't even know the reason why. They didn't even know. They didn't know. They didn't know. Is the Bible recorded it there? That they were just there. Oh, you just saw Brother Ben is angry, you're angry too. Have you seen the Lagos traffic? Somebody forgot his keys. As soon as he reverses to go back to go and pick the keys, everybody will be pissed. Everybody, they are turning back. I'm Robert Day front. But who told Everybody, why are you turning? Ah, you say, no, this is the man with the front. Now, the man where they he forgot his keys. He just remembered that he should turn at the right junction. Is that your remember? Everybody will start on he he and they will block another route. Ah, Lagos. If you have not been to Lagos, go on the holy pilgrimage. <laughs> it's a city you have to be. Oh, it stands out. Sister Asata, do you agree with me? Hmm? Okay. Let's continue. There was a riot. Gaius and Aristarchus, the companion of Paul, they held them and they dealt with them. Gave them black eye, broken arm. Pastor, how did you know? Acts chapter 20, 1 to 4. The Bible says, that Paul encouraged them greatly. You followed me to a crusade in Gloucester. They said they captured the brother Ben and brother Jones. They captured them. If they took you to an hotel, will I come and console you? So they said, where we see you, see, ah, wear your shoe. And you wore the same type. Maybe I saw brother Jones and for that bed, <laughs> barefooted. <laughs> he went and I said, where are your shoes? One guy treat. <laughs> <laughs> and I would think that, <laughs> oh, if you didn't follow me, maybe this thing would not have happened. Are you here? And I begin to console you happy touching. Because I don't want you. You are a new convert. You just got converted in Macedonia. You guys are new converts. I don't want that for you. Are you here? And I begin to console you and console you and console you and console you. The Bible says Paul stood there to console them. Yeah. Now, but they still followed him. Will persecution stop you? That is the question. Amen. Amen. Now, 
Gaius knew that it was not a bed of roses. It wasn't a bed of roses to serve God. He knew that. Amen. Amen. Gaius was baptized. If we call baptism and class today and you know that they sprinkled water on you, we look at him. I asked a question last week. You understand? You say you belong to church, but there are principles of the church you don't believe in. That shows you are higher than the authority of the church. That is not of God. The Bible says, humble yourself. It's pride. It's pride. It's pride. Don't use the age of a pastor. Don't use the gender of a pastor. Do you get that? Don't use the age, the qualification, the gender. Don't use the status of a pastor to decide, determine whether or not you will obey him. It's pride. Boris Johnson is not the oldest. Yeah. He's our prime minister. Will you do that to Boris Johnson? If Boris Johnson tells you to come today, will you say, I don't believe in it? That's the question. Obama was president of America. Was he the oldest? But do you know that Romans 13 1 yeah. says there is no authority that be other than the one that is ordained of God? Do you know it is God that set people up? Do you know that every time you are ruled to a constituted authority, you are ruled to God? I didn't say that. Read Romans 13. Quickly, we have to move now. Romans 13. Quickly. From verse 1. Let's listen to what the Bible says quickly. Let every soul be subject unto the higher powers. Did you see? Let every soul. Now, are all so young? No. Are all so old? No. Now, now, are all higher powers old powers? No. Let every soul be subject to higher authority. Uh -huh. For there is no power but of God. You know, that power there is not physical power no. like power out. Mm -hmm. That power is talking about there is no authority. authority. The word should be authority. authority. There is no authority. As soon as I tell, if I delegate Sister Titi that stand in for me as pastor when I go, every authority backup of a pastor is what I've conferred on yeah. her. So you will not say, when Pastor Olu comes, then I will obey you. No, he has already. God cannot be here to preach. So he called me and said, whoever receives you has received me. Was yeah. that not what Jesus Christ said? Yes. Matthew chapter 10. He said, whoever rejects whatever you say, he said, it's not you. Don't take it personal. Yeah. God said, don't take it personal with them. Anybody that looks down on you, don't take it personal. It is me they are looking down on. And I will fix them. Amen. There is no power. Read it. The powers... Okay, do you want me to start? Yes, the powers that be... The powers that be are ordained of God. Uh -huh. Whosoever therefore resisted the power, uh -huh. resisted the ordinance of God, uh -huh. and they that resist shall receive to themselves damnation. He said they receive damnation. Say you say you will not obey. He said, don't worry. You have received damnation unto yourself. Amen. Amen. In Matthew chapter 10, from verse what? 40, he said, whosoever receives you, Pastor Olu, whosoever receives you, that receive, your stand is not coming to my house. It's how you receive the person yes. yeah. that is coming. And they say, hey, welcome, how are you? It's everything. There are two different kinds of coming. You have to understand. It is not the one you stage manage. It's not stage manage. You do, uh, come. Come. Mm -hmm. Don't sit down. He said, what? You've received damnation. He said, Whosoever. Read it. Matthew 10, 40. Are you there? He that receiveth you, receiveth me. He who receives you, receives me. And that, he, 
Uh-huh. And he that received me, uh-huh. received him that sent me. If you receive Pastor Olu, Jesus Christ said you have received him. Yeah. And if you have received Jesus, he said you have received God. It is God you have received. Amen. Yeah. Let me give you one example that came. I went to visit Sister Dominic one day. She yeah. said, I have to come and do Christmas in their place. In fact, since they gave back to me, I've never been served like that in my life. In my entire life, I've never been served like that in my entire Up till now, she's still topping the chat. <laughs> listen, 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 listen. And out of excitement, he said, God came to my house today. My sister was there. My sister said, no, my brother is not God. And I told my sister, I said, by now, Sister Eunice, should, you should know that uh, Sister Dominic should know better that I'm not God. That was the scripture. Who so receives you. He believes that the carrier of God came. There's no way. Listen, listen to me. There's no way I will agree that I'm God and die. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Do you think Pastor Olu is foolish? No. Never. God has given me wisdom. I won't accept that I'm God. I knew the spirit in which he talked. Ah, he said, Father. He said, God has come to my How can it be that I will be the I will be God? If I'm God, why can't I help myself in my issue? The problems around me, God should solve it now. I should solve it. Oh, did you get what I'm trying to say? What he meant was that a representative who so receives you has received Jesus, has received God. That was the scripture she was put. And I just paid a prayer. You understand? I said, I see money. Yeah. I was there. Thank you. I said, I see money. And God will visit you with money. And I left. All right? After the, because the visit was very good. We went out one day. The money had not manifested. We were in our car. I said, that money issue is still coming. A man came. But I, I'm, I'm not so happy with her. And just packed 10,000 pounds. He said, I just want to give it to you. The man wanted to give another 10,000. Because... She has not known that upon the increase of thy lips shall thy belly be filled. She won't reject it again, but from this lesson. He said, no, 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 it's okay, it's okay. Hey! It's okay. 20 grand. You are owing me 10,000. Did you get that? Can you subject yourself? First Corinthians 1 Corinthians 1.14, can you subject yourself to be baptized? Tell me, can you subject yourself to be baptized? Can you subject yourself to be baptized? We will have part three. Because the Holy Spirit of God has messed up my own plan today. Oh yes. The Holy Spirit has messed up my plan. I want you to turn. You didn't get what I'm trying to say. You see, when God messes up your plan, you should be happy. Yeah. Because He's the only one that can help you that came to disrupt my own plan. Yes. Yeah. Did you get what I'm trying to say? Because there's a way you pray, you stand, and the man of God, you stand, will be struggling. There will be a title. And what he's in his heart to say. It now becomes a conflict. Do you obey God and be at peace? And that is what Joyce Mayer says. Yeah. Joyce Mayer taught me that. Yeah. He said, anywhere I stand, regardless of the topic I'm giving, I go with the anointing of East. He said, the anointing of East is where God is. Whatever you find yourself Seeing and not being able to recover, he said, to that line. 
God is ministering to people. Are we here? Yes. Say, but when you force yourself, you will satisfy yourself. Nobody will get blessed. Nothing will happen. Are we here? Yes. Because we should proceed more in the case of Gaius than this. I have a question. Will you subject yourself? If they say church meets at 10 o'clock, will you be humble enough to say God's 10 o'clock is 10 o'clock? Because at the end of the day, you respect hmm, your place of work than your place of worship. Can I come again? You respect your place of work than your place of worship. Can I come again? You respect your place of work than your place of worship. You know why? Because of daily bread. If I don't go on time and they sack me, I will not have money. But let me tell you, if God sacks you, what will ever work? Not, not. Did you read it in John 15 that without me, you can do nothing? I think John 5.30 or so. Without me, you can do nothing. Without me, even that job, you can't do it. Without me, even when you go, you will not be productive. Without me, you know, even when you work, they will not see what you are doing. Without me, you can't do nothing. When you are disconnected from your source, you are finished. It's just a question of time. You will dry up. Amen. Amen. Gaius was baptized. 1 Corinthians 1.14 I thank God that I baptized none of you, but Crispus and Gaius, mm -hmm. lest any should say that I had baptized in my own name. Okay. Amen. He baptized two people. These are two people Paul named that he ever baptized. What happened to the rest when he called for baptism? I want to know what happened to the rest. How could it have been? Are we here? How could it have been that Paul, Apostle Paul, who wrote half of the New Testament, baptized only two people? Ask that question. Romans 16, 23. I'll round up with that today concerning Gaius. And we will now do the impartation next week by the grace of God concerning the release of the spirit of Gaius. Amen. Amen. Please, those who are praying, pray that God Almighty will make it happen. Amen. You know why I said God messed up a service? Because a lot of people will say, listen to me. Look at some, what some people will be saying. Are you ready? Uh, if you really prepared and you had God, why should they mess up your service? Now, let me tell you one thing. What happened? Listen, I want to answer it. The price goes to the highest bidder. I went for a service one day. I had a problem at work. Big problem. Big problem at work. Oh, listen. Listen and learn a lesson and stop jumping from one church to the other. God is where you put him. Are you here? Yes. I had a problem and in my mind, because I used to think like some of you. The problem, I didn't think that maybe I could be free. As soon as I came in and I sat down, huh? and I sat down, and my pastor then said, God's prosperity part four. What do you think? Did he prepare? He prepared. Oh, I just dropped my head. I said, oh my, if I had known, I wouldn't have come to church again today. I said it. I said, we are teaching series. You know, and I found that, I felt that the series can't meet my problem. I mean, problem, they are talking about prosperity. Prosperity is not what I need. Who said? And I dropped my head and I said, Father, turn this service to my service. 
Did the pastor prepare? Yes. yes I prayed the prayer. Mm-hmm. I prayed and said, God, I'm in a big problem. Oh, God, if you don't help me, my job is gone. Help me. Because Satan, you know what I told myself? I said I would have just been going up and down. I would just enter into any church and they may address my issue. Mm. What a lie. Mm. But my issue, listen to what happened. If you stop believing in any pastor, leave the church. Mm. I beg you, honestly speaking, even though we a thousand people, we shall be a thousand times, it will be a thousand times that believe in me. I don't want those who don't believe in me around. Please go, go, go. And I'm saying it here. Nobody is feeding me. It's God feeding me. And it's God that will feed me properly. Do we understand? I won't beg anybody. You have to go, you go. But if we are for us, key in and benefit from the anointing. I stood, I stood, and I said, God help me. Because God is talking to somebody again. Yeah. 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 Today, God has come to answer your problem. Yeah. And you know yourself. Yeah. This testimony is addressing somebody. Yeah. And you know yourself. That's what the Spirit of the Lord is telling me. As soon as I prayed, my pastor went. He said, very, I told you that if you say shout hallelujah, no demon stands. He has that grace. Why do you say shout? It's very, very your stand. Is if he comes here, this atmosphere. If I the school authority, we know somebody came. Yes. When they say shout hallelujah, you can sit down. Very, very ah. Pastors deal. So listen. When that thing happened. The pastor just read Prosperity Part 4. After a while, he preached and preached and preached. "Mm." Now, does he hear God? If we say he didn't prepare. He said, "Mm." There is a man with a body in here. There is somebody with a strong body here. Yeah. He said, everybody stand up. We have to pray for this person. The church began to pray. Father, <laughs> come and see prayer. And our church knows how to speak in tongues. Tongues were flying throughout the roof. Are we here? Yes, Praise God. Hallelujah. We sat down. He said, Hallelujah. Glory to God. It is done. Amen. It is done. Prosperity part four. As I was saying, Todd John was explaining it. <laughs> he said, eh, this body is strong. He said, let everybody stand. We are not done yet. Each meeting was over 10 minutes. We stood again. He's a prayer. Pray. Pray. This body must be crushed. We prayed. We sat down. Morning service. A man stole the show. Steal the show in your services. But Victor prayed a prayer. He told me last week. There was a prayer. I said, Father, showcase me. And I brought him out. He said, you didn't know what you did. I told God to speak to me. There is something I asked God for. That if I come, let the pastor do this. And I didn't know. Are we here? Yes. We sat down again. The third time, he said, I said, prosperity, he was preaching. He preached two, three minutes. He said, this body is not done. He said, let's rise up again. Making what? Prayer. The whole prayer. A man stole the whole show in a service. Service, the food that should be shared. One man ate everything. We sat down again the fourth time. 
Whew, hallelujah. Prosperity, <laughs> part four. He tried again, tried again. He said, church, I'm not moved for us to preach again the fourth time. He said, let the whole church stand up. How many times? Four times. That's how we close the service. He said, this body must die. Okay, listen. How can... I was the chief engineer when the problems happened. Thank God I have a colleague there. You understand? The problem happened. They left the manager and sacked my juniors. Who should, does it happen? They sacked my workers, those under me, on duty with me with the problem, sacked all of them. Are you here? And left the manager. No query. No warning. Oh, awesome. Did you, I don't think you had me. Hmm? I don't think you had me. You are the manager on duty, work managers. You understand? So, and they now picked subordinates, picked cleaner, picked this, and sacked them. A Muslim colleague of mine stood up and said, Wally, as I said, I, said, I want to see you in my office. He was, you understand? He was a boss. Ah! He said, I followed your case. Most here, the gate. You didn't understand what that means. I followed you to the gate. That means I was out. He said, Wale, most here, the gate. I followed the gate. Open! They say, just turn. Only Wale, I'm a Muslim. And you are proven to us that you are a Christian. Jesus knew my sin. Yeah. Do you understand? He said this Jesus. He said, I will never tell you to become a Muslim. He said, I've seen Oritatobak Bani Lalasio. I heard it from his mouth. He said, Oritatobak Bani Lalasio. The God that saved you is the one you should serve. That was how I got that song. Orisha to bagbanila. Oyeta masi. Orisha to bagbanila. Oyeta masi. Oyeka masi titi aye. Oyeka masi. Oyeka masi lebiwa. Oyeka masi. Oh, tireni moshe. Eh, tireni moshe. Oh, tireni moshe. Oh, tireni moshe. Tireni oh, tireni moshe. Ah, tireni moshe. Oh, tireni moshe. Oh, tireni moshe. Tireni moshe. Oh, tireni moshe. Oh, tireni moshe.
man told me, Mohammed, was how, why I composed that song. That was how I got that song. The statement he told me in his office, one day I was thinking about God's goodness and I was inspired. I said, Samus, that was how that song came about. How can they sack the technicians under you and leave the manager? The manager should be one to be. Yeah. It was my problem. It was not their problem. Raise your hand. Do you think God has touched you today? Yes, sir. Are you sure God has touched you? Yes, Even with this testimony. Yes, Don't come to church not telling God to do something for you. I changed the service. I got my miracle. I got a song. I released an, a, a CD, an album. This is one of my songs in the album. I released an album based on that problem, based on that, on that prayer. I pray that Father save me. I raised my hands up to them and I decree and declare may what God has told us today sink into us. May everything that has been destroyed today remain destroyed. May everything that has been created today take effect in our life. Amen. We as a church agree no one dies. Amen. We as a church agree no one dies. Amen. We as a church agree no one dies. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Hello, I am Apostle Oluwole Adekunle of the Reality of Grace Ministries International. London, United Kingdom. I just want to use this opportunity to invite you to our services on Sundays from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. Come and enjoy the fresh presence of the Holy Spirit. A service where you know you will see the tangibility of God. You know God is made real via the world. And on Fridays we meet from 7 also to 10 p.m. where we pray and take what rightfully belongs to us in Christ Jesus. I will be expecting you to come and you will not regret to came for any of these services. God bless you. I'm expecting you. Peace be unto you. Shalom.